Hey, this is uh, Dan from Rambling Ambition, and we're uh, not in the van today. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about uh, wiring. In our previous videos, we had finished up pulling most of the wire runs, and I thought it would be good to talk about um, the wire that we selected and why we selected it and what the differences are. In the next video, uh, we will go through our Victron components. The last of them came in. So you can see what our power distribution is going to look like. So it's a mix of Victron Energy stuff um, and Blue Sea components. Um, I've used them before and I'm you know, really happy with how they work and work together, specifically Victron, because everything is connected. And um, it's more expensive. There are cheaper ways to do it. It's just how what I like to use. So <clears throat> for wiring, your, your van is not like your house because your house uh, sits still and um, your house is pretty much closed to the outside elements so you don't have to worry about things like corrosion or anything else like that unless of course you live by the beach uh, but still on the inside of your house it's wired just the same as any other house um, out there and what they typically use is uh, Romex and it's a three wire um, sheath uh, cable you can buy it at Home Depot, Lowe's, any of the big box stores and it comes with three wires, a ground wire, um, a neutral wire, and then your power wire is black. This is solid copper. Um, and it's designed specifically to go into houses. Um, and it's for alternator cur current. In the van, um, most of our circuits are DC circuits. We use a marine grade wire. And the reason why we use marine grade wire is because it's corrosion resistance. All the marine grade wire, um, this is some 10-3, so this is triplex wire. You can see that the wire is copper, but it's got a silver coating on it, and that's got 10 on it, and that keeps things from corroding. And there, you have the same circuits. You have a ground wire, which is green. You have a neutral wire, which is white, and then your power wire or the power feed is black. So just like it's in your house, the only difference is, is this is stranded wire versus um, solid wire. And some of the benefits of um, the stranded wire, like I said, is that uh, you have multi-conductors within the same wire, but they're all tin, so you're not going to have any corrosion problems. Now in a van, for us, um, almost all of our circuits are either uh, 20 amp or um, 15 amp circuits. We use, we use primarily two wire sizes, a 12-3, so that's um, a triplex wire, just like this, but it's 12 gauge. Um, and that can handle up to 20 amps. Um, the other wire we use is a 14-3, um, and this is mainly for our 15 amp outlets. Um, so using 12-3 in the kitchen, uh, primarily for the induction cooktop, uh, for the water heater, and for the kitchen outlets, it'll take things like a coffee maker or an air fryer or something like that. All the other outlets in the van, uh, which we don't expect them to pull more than 15 amps, um, are on a 15 amp circuit breaker uh, using the 14-3 <coughs> wire. And they're just the regular standard outlets that you plug a phone into or something like that. So our AC setup is pretty simple um, as the power from the inverter comes. Now the inverter gets a different cable. So this 10-3 that I showed you is good for 30 amps and typically you see folks utilize that from the shore power inlet uh, coming into the van from power from the outside and then that gets connected to the inverter. If you remember from our videos we used 8.3 the entire way. I had a long stretch of 8.3 and so I use that for the power in as well as the power from the inverter going to our AC distribution panel. So that that 8.3 uh, AC cable will carry 50 amps and so since the load going to the circuit breaker comes through a, a 30 amp main um, it won't allow any more than 30 amps so we're oversized uh, for what we need. Um, now that's the AC side. Our AC setup is pretty simple and we kept it that way for a reason. Um, we tried to make as much of DC powered um, as we can so DC circuits um, are different. So DC circuits come as a two conductor. Uh, this again is marine cable so my ground is uh, yellow and the hot is red whereas uh, you can get the 
the ground black. The reason for the difference in the marine world is uh, yellow is universally known as the ground within boats. And um, since I have a lot of stuff from a boat project that I was working on, a lot of the ground cables that I have are, are yellow. All right, so in the DC side, uh, we have two different types of cables. Like I showed you, we have the uh, marine cable, which is 10 wire. Um, and for all of our circuits in the boat um, that have, we use 12 to universally all the way across. The only, the only variance from that is I do have some 16 to uh, 16 gauge wire for the really low amp draw stuff like the LED lights, um, stuff like that, where it, we don't need the big heavy cable running to an LED puck light or to the outside LED lights because their amp draw is so low. The other types of cables we have some <clears throat> welding cable. Um, this is Temco's brand, T E M C O. Uh, this is four gauge wire, so this will take. The welding cable will take, it's again stranded copper, but it isn't tinned. Uh, once you get into these large diameters, so the six gauge, the four gauge, two, single, and then you have one aught, two aught, three aught, four aught cable, um, they get really, really expensive. And because our, our van isn't um, going to be exposed to um, extreme uh, weather conditions on the inside there's some humidity but the corrosive side of it um, just really doesn't exist uh, when we got to where the main battery cables are we went with welding cable you will notice that on our ground video we did use some marine uh, pre-made cable that was from another project and I have an example of that here where uh, this is just a, a pre-made cable from Pacer Marine. It comes from them um, with the uh, the ends already done and heat shrink. And um, and you can get these ends in any size. This happens to be 3 8 um, But for the big cable that we're using for our battery system, we needed 4 aught cable to carry the amp load that the um, 600 amp hours of lithium batteries are going to pull um from the battery bank into the distribution system and then push into the inverter and so i wanted to make my own cables because the configuration of that um i haven't kind of figured out specifically so ordering a uh, pre-made cable like this is kind of difficult um because i don't really know how things are going so i ordered a bunch of four off cable and this stuff is heavy it's stranded and this will take all of the um, all of the power from the batteries that I needed to. Um, with that, we got uh, lugs uh, that we can crimp ourselves, and so that's a good segue kind of into some of the tools that you'll need. So if you plan on wiring the van yourself, uh, like we did, there's some things that you're going to need, especially if you're going to do the whole project. Um, you're going to need some cable cutters. You're going to need some uh, wire stripper. This is my grandfather's, um, but it works great. And what this does is it helps you separate uh, the sheet. So on these cables, um, you have an outer sheath for protection, and then you have a, a protection around each individual cable. And what this does is basically helps push that end off just like that. And that way, when you go to slide this into whatever your appliance is, um, it's nice and neat. You can trim and you don't have to worry about trimming it. If you're planning on crimping stuff yourself, um, I have a, a heavy gauge crimper. And this will do from uh, number eight gauge wire all the way to four aught wire. And what this does is it just basically, it's a lever action and you put a dimple in it that crimps the end. And then we'll cover that with heat shrink. We have another uh, crimper that does eight gauge to uh, one aught cable. And basically it's a bunch of dies that turn kind of on a wheel. And so you can select the size that you want. And then basically you're just crimping it like that. And that gives you a nice hexagonal crimp on some of the smaller wire sizes. 
So we have a couple different um, boxes that have different lugs in them. And so this will go, uh, they're not very expensive. You can buy them on Amazon and it gives you all the different wire sizes and the holes uh, sizes for the studs that you need. And then it comes with heat shrink so you can take care of that. Now, if you're going to be inserting any of your cable into something that clamps, uh, one of the things that uh, the ABYC recommends is that you use a ferrule. And what a ferrule is, is they come insulated and non-insulated. And basically it takes that stranded wire where it connects and turns it into a solid wire. So. The ferrule basically looks like this. This one happens to be an insulated one. It slides over top of the wire and now you have a solid surface. And then basically you just take a crimper. That has a set of hexagonal draws on it and it's ratcheting. So it'll crimp down onto the wire itself. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. And then now you have a nice crimped surface that you can, and it's uh, insulated that you can put into your outlets or whatever this is going to connect to. Now that works. That works on the DC side as well as the AC side. It doesn't really matter. It just makes a nice solid connection uh, to all of your circuits. Um, and then either I have a large heat gun and a small heat gun uh, to do the heat shrink on. And uh, the last thing that I recommend you have, and we talked about this in the last video, is a fiberglass fish tape. And so what this allows you to do is run wire, um, run this through your van, however you're going to do it, and then you can just simply pull your wire along following the fish tape. It's like they're $15 on Amazon, and it makes life when you're running wire a whole lot easier. One thing about 12 volt wire that you don't have to worry about so much with AC wire is with direct current wire, you have to worry about voltage loss. So AC wire is basically rated, rated for an amp rating. Like I said, the 10.3 the is rated for 30 amps. Uh, the 12.3 is rated for um, 20 amps. And the 14.3, which is the other thing that we pull, is rated for 15 amps. DC wire is different. So the wire cable itself and there are lots of wire uh, selectors, um, charts online. You can go to West Marine. You can go just Google uh, 12 volt ampacity. And what that's going to tell you is that you have to size your wire based on how long the run is. So the 12 2 uh, wire that we're running for almost all of our DC circuits, except for the LED lights, um, can take up to 20 amps on this wire but that that starts to decrease the longer the wire is so they what you're looking for is a three percent voltage drop over the entire run of the wire and the run of the wire is both <clears throat> the lengths of the ground and the length of the positive and they should be the same on all of your circuits and so what that means the three percent voltage drop or less is that the amount of volts that you have at the beginning of the circuit is the amount of volts that you have at the end of the circuit. If you're using a 12 volt distribution block and at the 12 volt distribution block, you have 12.8 um, volts. If your 12 volt accessory is say five feet away, that means that your app, your, your run, your DC run is actually 10 feet. So it's five feet for the positive five feet for the negative because it, it makes a circle, it makes a loop. And you want to size the wire based on how many amps that circuit or that appliance is going to pull. And so you have to be careful with DC because DC is based on the length of the wire. Um, so you want to try and keep your wire runs as short as you can because uh, otherwise you're going to be 
spending a tremendous amount of money in, in cable itself. And it can get really expensive really quick. Uh, so you really have to be thoughtful about you know, where your 12 volt distribution system sets and how long your runs are. Um, because if you pull too many amps um, on a, a too small a wire, it, it can create a fire. So you just need to be cognizant of that. So to sum it up, you know, real quick, this is, uh, you got to do your research. If you're uncomfortable with electricity, uh, either AC or DC, um, find someone to help you out. Find someone to, you know, either a service or a friend that is comfortable with electricity um, and how to run the wire and run the circuits and make the connections um, to ensure that uh, you don't create a hazard inside of the van that you spend so much time uh, trying to build. So again, AC, three wires, ground, neutral, and power. DC is just two wires or a duplex wire that has a ground and a power wire. Try to use the marine grade stuff because not only does it conduct better than just basic stranded cop copper, um, but you're going to have a uh, corrosion resistance that I think is valuable for the cost difference. I think in how much money you're spending in your van, uh, this cable is well worth it. You know, for our, the only place that we're really using the welding cable in our van is the DC to DC converter. So we're running four gauge wire uh, from the battery terminal lock underneath the seat in the Sprinter van to our uh, two DC to DC chargers. So the four gauge will run to a, uh, a power junction box and then we'll run six gauge wire from that uh, to the DC to DC chargers because that's what they can accept. We'll run six gauge wire from all of our uh, Victron components uh, back to the uh, distribution system itself. And then all of our main battery cables are all four lock. So the battery grounds and the battery power wires are all four watt wires. The power uh, feed that goes to um, the inverter to create the AC power is all uh, four watt uh, cable. And uh, like I said, um, it's heavy and it's expensive. So you have to be sure that your setup is the way you want it to be and that you're going to minimize the amount of cable runs that you have to manage that voltage drop that you're going to have run over run. Don't forget your tools. Uh, they make a world of difference in how you do things. There, of course, are all kinds of types of crimpers out there. You, there's a style that you can hit with a hammer, um, which I find pretty cumbersome. It's well worth the money. I mean, they're not that expensive, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, to make the crimps yourself. So. so I hope you guys got something from the video. I will leave links in the description below for all of the stuff that you see on the table and a bunch of stuff that you don't see on the table because I've used it already um, in case you want to buy some of this stuff for your van. I do have an Amazon affiliate account. It doesn't cost you any more, uh, but it does help us out in the process. So if you're interested in buying some of the stuff, consider using the links provided in the description. This is Dan from Ramblin' Ambition. Thanks for watching.